How to stylize characters is my favorite. How to stylize characters. How to stylize characters. Please. How to stylize characters. Stylized. Stylized characters. Stylized. 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 <laughs> okay, guys. I get it. So I asked you guys for a lot of tutorial suggestions and I got that. <laughs> so now I have ideas piled up for the next 10 years or so. <laughs> Thank you so much for suggesting all the incredible topics for tutorial videos to come. <laughs> there was one topic in particular that stood out and that was a tutorial on how to create stylized characters. And since I have a tendency to give into peer pressure, why not? <laughs> I know from the popularity of certain videos that I upload that you guys are really into tutorials and learning new stuff and thriving to become amazing artists. <laughs> and this is why I am so excited to announce that this video has actually been made possible to make for me because of today's amazing sponsor, Skillshare. You probably already heard about Skillshare from other artists on YouTube at this point, but in case you don't know what it is, allow me to shortly explain. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on art, design, business and more. The premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of their classes and whether you're looking to learn something completely new or just want to brush up some old knowledge, Skillshare definitely has a class for you. I used Skillshare a lot last year learning from the pros working in the actual art industry about being a freelance artist. Everything from managing my work to getting paid for what I do. And recently I've gone back to basics and started watching videos on stylization and character creation. Right now I offer two months free trial on Skillshare to the first 500 of you guys that click the link in the description below. A trial like this was actually how I discovered Skillshare in the first place. So hurry up and claim one of the 500 spots using the link below. And if you decide to stay after the trial, their annual membership is $8.25 a month. And without further ado, let's just get started with this tutorial. Up until now, I have made my fair share of stylus characters, that's for sure. Stylization is about transforming what you see in real life or in a picture into something of your own interpretation while still holding on to some of the real-life aspects of the design. In this video, we're going to focus on portraits. After the small preliminary lesson, I will draw two portraits. One with a very semi-realistic look and one which is more cartoony. While I draw them, I will explain my thought process and give you some tips as well. I will talk a lot about traits and characteristics such as head shape, eyes, facial proportions and shapes. So let's shortly look into that before we get started. Head shapes. Try to analyze head shapes. There are so many differences in our head shapes and like any other trait, if it's changed, we can start to look like a completely different person. You can try to draw on top of images of people and see how different their head shapes can be. Face proportions. This refers to how the eyes, eyebrows, nose, lips, cheeks and all the other things you have stuffed into your face <laughs> are aligned according to each other and to the head shape as well. I usually draw a circle in the overall head shape and map out the features using these lines. Then I can use the grid as my guide when I start building the face. If you change some proportions, for instance, move the eyes up or down, the person you're drawing will start to look less like in the reference. Remember to also align the face with the head shape. Some people's faces are offset a little and that can be a characteristic as well. Noses. The shape of our nose is also very defining in case you haven't noticed. It is placed just in the middle of our face after all, so you ought to have been looking at a lot of noses. You probably notice people with very distinct noses more often. Some have very long noses, some have short noses, some have very big and crooked noses, some have very petite and round noses. And some people just have potato shaped noses. <clears throat> people like me. When drawing noses, look at its length how dominant the nostrils are and if it has any certain shape. 
It usually does though. Eyes. Eyes are probably the trait in the face that we often refer to as the most recognizable in a character or in a person. When picking off traits about a person's eyes, try to look for how dominant the eyelids are or what shape they have, both the upper and the lower eyelids. How wide or narrow their eyes are and how big the pupils are as well, how much of the space in the wide area they take up. Eyebrows. Look for the overall shape of the eyebrow. How it curves, how thick they are, and how far or close they are to the other brow and the eye underneath. Those were some tips on noticing traits in a person's face. Notice when I start drawing how I consider to include, exclude, exaggerate, minimize certain features in the picture. For this tutorial, I have chosen to draw Nyane. I hope I pronounced that right. From Instagram. I will put a link to her profile below in the description as well. I chose a picture of her because I think she has some very clear features that we can work with. First I'm going to create a stylized portrait with high resemblance to the reference. I'll start by analyzing her head shape. Nyane has an upside down egg-shaped head it looks like. Some people have more round faces, some have more squared or longer faces. There are many face shapes, so try to analyze what the overall shape is. Next, I look at the proportions of her face. How the nose, the lips, the eyes and the brows are placed according to each other and according to the face shape as well. Moving just one of these parts around can make it look like a completely different person. The shape of the eyebrows are pretty important too. Once I've mapped her features so they resemble those in the reference, I can start looking into some details. I do this by creating a new sketch layer and create a more detailed sketch. I use the mock-up underneath as my guide. I see that she has some pretty noticeable cheekbones, so I'm going to lightly sketch them in for future reference as well. Her nose is also a little wide and she has a very apparent circle shape on the tip of her nose as well. Her eyes are pretty narrow and wide and her eye lips are pretty visible both over and under the eye. The process I go through right now are very close to when I do photo studies. In photo studies I try to recreate the reference as good as I can, but in this case we are also applying some stylization. Time to look at the hair. There are some major things that you can try to analyze when recreating the hair. Think about the overall biggest shapes the texture of the hair, and the parting of the hair. I think Nyane's hair looks very soft, not thin, but soft. She has some great volume around the roots, some kind of jelly. <laughs> so we can make the hair on the top of her head puffier. This also helps exaggerate her head shape a little. When drawing the ponytail, I mostly think about the main shapes of her hair, and when I fill in the details, I also try to capture the fall in her hair. In other words, how heavy or light it looks. By adding a lot of these single hair strands, I emphasize the softness of her hair. Her parting can be seen on her bangs. It's not entirely centered, but just offset a bit to the left. I also decided to redraw her eyes. Her makeup and eye shapes are very distinguishable, and I felt I needed to exaggerate the features even more in order for the stylization to still be recognizable. I guess this is also a great opportunity to mention the importance of the eyes and the makeup. On the screen I now also show you two other pictures of Nyane. She still wears makeup on those, but in a pretty different way than in the picture I'm using as a reference. Even though her base eye shape is the same, and here I'm referring to the actual shape of the lids, how much of her eyes are showing, and the size of her pupils as well. The makeup does make quite a difference to her eyes appearance. So my tip here is this. First analyze and draw the eye shape. As if you can imagine the person isn't wearing any makeup. Then apply the makeup when you start coloring and shading. Apply the makeup as you think the person in the reference would. In this image for instance, Nyane doesn't show a lot of lower lashes. 
but she does have a lot of volume in her other lashes. So we only draw a little lower lashes and go all in on the upper lashes. Now I'm going to clean up the line art and get it ready for coloring. In this first example, I'm not going to create clean lines. My approach here is much more loose, so I color the clean sketch instead. You could argue that the clean sketch is in fact my line art, but it's just isn't as clean <laughs> as in the next example I'm giving. The color of a person and their traits can be equally as important as the overall proportions of the face. I'm going to make this very easy for myself and pick off her colors using the color picker. If you want a real challenge and practice, try pick the correct colors without picking them off the reference. For the sake of this tutorial though, I will make it easy for myself. And I'm not saying that you have to use the same colors as in the reference, because maybe your style is all about saturation or desaturation, so just use the colors that you want. I'm going to use shading to define her features. I pick off colors and block them in on a new layer that is clipping to the base layer. I use a mix of a soft round brush and a hard brush and finally blending them together. I'm really trying to emphasize Nianae's incredible cheekbones because they are quite a strong feature in her face. There are some elements that my style is going to overshadow from the reference. What I mean is that we're still doing a stylization here. It's not a one-to-one -one recreation of the reference. Some of the elements of my style should still shine through because that's my kind of stylization. I like to draw big eyes and big lips. I also have a kind of specific way to shape and gradient eyebrows, and all those aspects should still shine through in this stylization. When I paint the second portrait in just a minute, it is much more true to my style rather than the reference. In this portrait though, we aim to be true to both at the same time. I have a specific way to shade noses as well. Even the way I apply highlights to a face may be more true to my own way of doing things rather than being true to the reference. It's up to you to make these small calls. And as you will see, once I start drawing the second and more cartoonified portrait, all these little calls matter and create very different results. Lastly, one of Nianae's amazing features are her freckles and birthmarks. Not that she would actually turn into a completely different person if we didn't include them, but it would definitely look odd compared to the reference. When stylizing a person, you can start by asking yourself, what are the five first things I notice about this person? Those five things are likely the most noticeable traits of the character and should definitely be maintained or even emphasized in your drawing. To me, looking at this picture, it would be her eyes, her nose, her cheekbones, her freckles, and the overall palette. I did some minor corrections to the drawing after putting it away for a day, and this is the final result. Now let's take this even deeper and cartoonify her even more. This next example is going to be very true to my style. I'm still taking the head shape, overall eye and lip shape into consideration and trying to apply it to my style best as possible. The goal here is that it should still resemble Niamh, but I want my style to be the most recognizable element here. It is not a secret that I have a tendency to have same face syndrome sometimes and this is potentially due to the fact that I'm often afraid to deviate too much from my own style. My advice to you and to myself, be comfortable enough to dare to deviate a bit sometimes. I believe it will make us better artists. In the end of this example I'm adding some saturation and adjusting the contrast as well so it better reflects my style. Stylization is not only about how you recreate a character in, in a reference, it can also be about incorporating certain elements that you always include in your art. Maybe you always draw with saturated colors, maybe you always draw in black and white, maybe you always have some kind of glow that you add. This should definitely be reflected in your drawing as well. So to sum up. Stylization is actually just what you make of it. To stylize something means to represent it in a certain way. And that could be through your style. There are no specific rules as to how detailed, realistic or cartoony it has to be in order for the portrait to be stylized. 
I'd say it's a stylization as soon as you deviate from the reference, because it was a choice you made about the representation of the figure in the reference. Doing photo studies are a great way to start doing stylization, by the way. You'll quickly start to recognize the small things that you do to make the drawing different from the reference. Taking a few online classes on, for instance, caricature, can greatly help you spotting the key features of characters. So I highly recommend that you use that free Skillshare offer I was talking about earlier and go save some classes right away. And lastly, stylization is in no way limited to what I explained to you today. My focus in this video has been on recreating characters in a certain style based on their features and traits. Stylization can be much more than that, but also much less. It depends on how you create your art and what you want it to look like in the end. I hope very much that this video was not too rambly, but instead very helpful or at least insightful to you guys. And remember that you can also join the journey over on Patreon, where I share monthly digital art tips and tricks, sketch posts and much more. And until next time, take care. Bye!